It's wonderful to be with you today. And I have to say before I start that during the pandemic, we all had to get creative, right? And one of the things that my husband and I did, for, it took us a year and a half, is that we took this great big map of Utah, two-sided, and we visited every single state national park and we visited every single municipality, whether it was incorporated or not. We have found ghost towns all over the state. And so we have been in every single community and loved, uh, loved seeing the different land and, and different communities throughout the state. We didn't stop with some of them. We should have taken a picture. We drove through and sometimes I would take my cell phone and say, where are we? and it would tell you if you were in the city or not. So, little background there. I am excited to be able to have a few minutes with you to share something that's just being launched in the last few months called A Bolder Way Forward. Now, I have to say, I love being a woman, and I love living in Utah. I just wanna start by saying that. So, what we know, however, is that national and statewide studies continue to show that girls and women in Utah are not thriving in critical areas. What we know is year after year, Utah continues to have high levels of domestic violence, sexual assault, child sexual abuse, gender-based discrimination, while also ranking as the worst state for women's equality and having low levels of women's leadership representation in nearly all domains. So there are struggles, many states struggle with all of these things, all states struggle, but in Utah, we really are high or low, depending on the, the metric in so many of the areas. And what we know is that there are many groups, parts and pieces, many people, not just women, men as well. We have more and more male allies uh, coming to the table and really taking it, you know, using their voice. They have, um, daughters they care about, they have granddaughters they care about, they have female employees they care about, and I love that. What we have been doing at the Utah Women in Leadership Project is looking at the research on where we are to bring awareness for change. Now, the needle has moved slightly. Now, I will say ever so slightly. Not a lot in, in the past few decades. And so I have, in past years, done work at the United Nations, in, at the European Union on Women's Leadership, and in those national and global settings, we look at trajectories. But I had never taken the data and brought it to Utah until 2022. And what we realized when we did that is if we keep moving the rate we're moving, it will take two, three, for decades to make notable progress. And I say that is not acceptable. I have a daughter, I have three sons. I have a granddaughter, Hadley, who's four, and my daughter is having twins next week. And one of them is Savannah and one of them is James. And as I think about my granddaughters and my grandson, there's work to do with boys and girls and young men and young women and men and women. But when I think about my own granddaughters, three to four decades is not acceptable in terms of getting our violence rates down and getting some of those positive things up. We have to do something different. And so what we're saying is it's time for Utah to embrace a bolder way forward because when we lift Utah girls and women, we actually lift boys and men. We lift families and we need to continue to lift families. And so let me just share with you real briefly. Um, 2022, I don't know, some of you have been following my work for many years and my team, but 2022, I have to say, was a real extra restless year for me as I looked at some of the statistics and said, do I keep doing the work that we're doing? Do we do something different? How can we do things better? Because three to four decades is not acceptable. And so um, I, I tell you, uh, I, you know, I came to this realization last year, and this was really in October, November, that if we are serious about ensuring that Utah women and girls thrive, we need to create change sooner, not three to four decades, but by 2030, 
with the checkpoint in 2026. So part of my doctoral work is around societal change. I've been studying it for years. And then when you look at more recent data on change, we don't have the appetite for 20 years, 30 years. Our appetite is three, three and a half years as far as we can see. We need to change there so you can see those, those dates. And this includes not just more stuff that we do, not just more outputs, but outcomes. And so let me give you a little background. So, so I, a, a book was suggested to me, and the time that I have to read these days are on airplanes. So in late October, I took two flights to Costa Rica, two flights back, and read the book, How Change Happens. And that really inspired me. And maybe it's because I am, I'm a very spiritual and religious person. When I'm on airplanes, I tend to get some good inspiration. Maybe it's because I'm closer to heaven or something. I'm not sure. <laughs> but by the time I landed back in Salt Lake, I had the title. I had the model. I thought the model would change um, and then just started moving forward. It took me a month to run this idea by about 100 people and then move forward. Basically, what this book does, and I've been inspired by many books, but this is the most recent, is the researchers looked at what change efforts have been really successful in the United States and what change efforts, even if they had a lot of money, were not moving the needle. And so they looked at things like Mothers Against Drunk Driving, very successful. National Rifle Association has been a successful um, at doing the work that it's, it's been doing. Uh, smoking, you know that change effort has been very successful. Gay marriage was very successful. Then compared them with those that were not successful, again, even though there were a lot, may have been a lot of money. What was the difference? And so this is gonna be very simple, but, uh, and, and I will, I brought some cards with some information that I'll put out there after. But I studied decades ago systems thinking. I've, assist, I've been studying it through the years, but basically this really hit me in a different way. That the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. Systems are made up of interrelated, interdependent parts, but they cannot be understood as a function of isolated components. The relationship between the parts is critical. And that's really the key, the book is much longer and <laughs> has a lot more information, to more, more boldly advancing a common cause. And I will tell you, in Utah, we're so great at parts. We do pieces and parts. We have 180 women's groups in the state. We do many, many other things. We're trying so hard, yet the needle is not shifting in these areas. And can I stop right there and mention something? This is, this is important. We call on the abundance mentality, not the scarcity mentality. And I have seen the scarcity mentality so much in this state, and I say it's time to do the bun abundance mentality. And that means sometimes when we have things for girls and women, people push back and say, wait, boys and men are just as important. Yes, they are. <laughs> we can have the abundance mentality. Now, I can lift women of color and as a white woman, and that doesn't take from me. Male allies can, can lift women, and it doesn't take from them. And so that's, that's an important element to think about. So this is kind of a crazy thing. Hopefully you can see it. Can you see it pretty well? A little bit? Some of you, at least in the front? I can't really see you, but hopefully you're nodding. <laughs> okay, I can see you. Thank you. Um, so this is the model that really came to me, and my team is working on this. Um, and it's really this wheel of change. Now, the book really talked about one change effort at its time, like Mothers Against Drunk Driving. But by the time we, I landed back in Salt Lake, I'm like, we can't just take seven years for one of these pieces. There's already so many things, people interested, groups, organizations doing things. We don't need to start from scratch. Why don't we empower and bring in all of the pieces on all of these elements that we're calling spokes so that we can shift together in powerful, powerful ways. And I will tell you, no state has attempted this. And I will tell you that cities and towns, all municipalities, counties are going to be key 
to make sure we can shift. And again, this is shifting girls and women, but also families. So if you can see, do you see, see that steep hill there? I know the visual is not the most perfect, but that is, is the work that we've been doing with girls and women. Programs, efforts, initiatives really up to this point have been making the road smoother. But the wheel of change has really not been moving. We've been stuck. And so do you see there's 18 spokes in five main categories. If you look at those safety and security spokes, child sexual abuse, domestic violence, poverty and homelessness, sexual assault, sexual harassment, and gender-based discrimination. We have reports on all of these where we stand. And in most areas, we're either the, the negative way, they're too high or too low. Um, we have a couple of things that we're doing well. If you look down at the bottom on the left, two that are very close to my heart are health across the lifespan. And by the way, we've spent the last six months lining up partners for all of the spokes. So we have leadership organizations that are coming together in health across a lifespan. Inner Mountain is an anchor, University of Utah Health is an anchor, Regents Blue Cross Blue Shields is a, is a donor to this work. And you see home and family. Sometimes people, when I speak, think that I'm all about women going to the workforce. If women are in the workforce, and, and by the way, changing demographics, most women are working for pay these days in some way, right? That's important. Yet, home and family is such a foundation, is such a foundation. And we, even as women with other women, need not to be judging, right? We need to support the choices of women. And so equal partnership and marriage and those things are so important to talk about and work. And if you see, you know, work, workplace spokes, childcare, entrepreneurship, the pay gap, leadership development, organizational strategies and workplace culture, we've teamed up in many, much, many different areas with the Governor's Office of Economic Opportunity and the Governor, Lieutenant Governor, uh, Abby Cox are, are all supportive of this and the government in general. So we uh, encourage you to think about it too. Um, education, you can see those. And then of course, there's three main areas of the community engagement spoke. Women in, in politics, women in, in elected office is one. State, board, state and local boards and commissions is another, and civic education, civic engagement, advocacy, all of those things are, are another um, area. And so if you look at the rims too, we have uh, areas that really cross over into all of these spokes. And before I get to that, let me just say this. Every spoke influences every other spoke. I want, want you to think about that. Look at finance. There is a direct correlation between finance, education, domestic violence. You may not see all those connections, but they're there, all of these things. So when one spoke is starting to move, we really believe it's going to help others. And, and you can go on our website, uh, boulderwayforward.org, and really look at all the organizations that are in. Uh, Zions Bank has been a founding support and the Utah legislature as well in terms of this work. So if you look at those RIMS under identity, we already have impact teams um, specific to refugee and immigrants, um, race, ethnicity, LGBTQ. Under There's other ones, disability, veterans, some different things that that they will influence and make sure all of those things are moving forward. And more related to you, we are just now in the last two weeks, and we've already connected with 12 counties in the last year, but we are just in the last two weeks starting to form county coalitions. In fact, we have six county coalitions we've met with um, that we had prior relationships to. We have two counties of those that we're struggling with a little bit. If you're from Emory or Sevier, let me know because we need, we need um, an executive team in those areas. But we'll be reaching out to more in, on the county level, but also if these changes don't get down to many of them, the home, things are not gonna change. Do you know that we're very high? One in five is the estimate 
of children will experience sexual abuse in Utah. One of five. I want you to just sit with that for a minute. Yet we believe that it's not in our community. We believe it's not on our street or in our neighborhood. Until we get the messages to families, until they understand things will not change. And we need change. We do to support our families, to support women and girls and everyone. So the overarching goal of the Boulder Way Forward is to make Utah a place where more girls and women can thrive in any setting. And although there's not one metric that can assess and measure that overarching goal, we are working and just starting to put them online. Um, bold goals for 2026 and 2030 and then measurable outcomes. That's, that's been a lot of work for us. And so we will continue to look for those metrics and use research to measure so we can sh see that shift. And we will continue to be the information hub of research. And the end, I wanted to remind myself that this includes positive metrics too. We want to have short-term wins. We want to see things shift and want to celebrate those. So those things are important too. So to conclude, Utah must do better to ensure everyone thrives. I love this quote by Melinda Gates. She said, if you want to lift up humanity, empower women, it's the most comprehensive, pervasive, high leverage investment you can make in human beings. So I happen to have no sisters and six brothers, awesome, awesome brothers, and I will say, that they, and so many of you here in the room, men become allies and engage in this work. It's so critical for all of us to move forward because when you look at the statistics, there are things amiss in this state, even though I love being here. And we can do hard things here in Utah. I mean, it is time to do something and Utah is the place. So our vision is not to lift girls and women at the expense of boys and men. That's the scarcity mentality. Instead, we believe there's enough for everyone through cooperation and collaboration, which is the abundance mentality. And as I said, I have a few materials I'll leave out there and really want to leave you with this challenge of start thinking about that. How do you want to engage in this work? Because this is what can lift families here in the state and we need to take it seriously. And um, even the last week with an editorial, I've had people, people clinging on to the status quo, trying to say there's no issues in this state. The data tell us otherwise. So it's for all of us to engage more deeply because when we strengthen the impact of Utah girls and women, we do strengthen everyone. Thank you so much for your time. What, oh, one more quick thing. I really believe that Utah can become the national leader in how to implement positive change for girls, women, and families. That is something that we can do, and no other state is doing this. I've been doing this work for a long time. Nobody is going to touch it, but we can. Again, it's time now. Utah is the place for a bolder way forward. Thank you so much.